what I am presenting today is, are uh, a few applications of uh, the infrastructure you saw yesterday. Nothing in particular in deep blue. But the first is uh, on a small catchment, the Posina catchment. You already see is uh, uh, 60 kilometers from here, more or less. Is uh, the mountain that you see south uh, east. And uh, is, uh, we have several stations there, flood stations, uh, ground station of measurements, and we have uh, uh, three gauge stations. And the uh, <coughs> thing is uh, uh, used by University of Padova, the colleague of the University of Padova, the Department of uh, Agricultural and Forestry. And uh, we, uh, we collaborated <coughs> with, with them. The, uh, there is a paper by Abera et al. We, where we do the thing. And uh, uh, what I, I want to underline is uh, that, um, yes, we, uh, we did all the stuff that you saw in the last days. But uh, for instance, we, uh, the, the modularity of the process allows you to um, to do things uh, at a different stage, to separate the process and to calibrate a single part of the process uh, we are analyzing. And, uh, okay, we start with the intercleaning of uh, rainfall and temperature there. Uh, the subdivision, <coughs> as you saw, is in, in 42 uh, sub-areas, so around two kilometers at summiting on the average. And uh, we use particle for swarm to uh, calibrate <coughs> the first the caging. First, uh, then in our procedure, we, go, uh, we went and we took the data, we uh, interpolate the data, and we try to evaluate the caging and the forecasting of the caging uh, at the first stage, which is actually what we did in this school, Not nothing particularly different. Uh, the other things that uh, uh, is uh, uh, relatively different from other places, even if it's, it's my, all, of, all of these is, are minor things, but at the end, I think they produce uh, quite different results <coughs> than uh, using a, a less uh, careful procedure. Because the other thing that we have uh, to take care of is uh, uh, separation between rainfall and snowfall. Is a uh, bassing in over there. This year is not is not is not snowing. Maybe tonight. I don't know. And uh, and uh, but uh, usually is uh, there is a part of the season that is a snow snowfall dominated. So we have to uh, as uh, uh, who no, who works on these issues about snow. Um, she knows that. Uh, uh, one particular uh, important thing is to uh, to get the right uh, snowfall amount uh, because when the snowfall is has, been, has fallen, uh, the uh, snow remain, remains there for a while. So if you uh, get, uh, if you have this information wrong, you keep wrong for all the season. So uh, what uh, we do here, this is, this is a fake, a fake uh, um, component and a wish, a wish list for a component because this work was done outside with uh, the R, and the R software, and then the results were plugged in, is that uh, we use our modules for, uh, for, for no separation, which is a very simple function based on temperature, something like this, this zero degree. And we say this is one. It's a little bit push on, on the positive anyway, but if we have a curve like this, you say this temperature is here, the fraction of, uh, of snow is this one. 
This curve depends on usually on a couple of parameters, let's say alpha beta. And so what we did is uh, we <coughs> used a, 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 a here let's say calibration manual because uh, um, unfortunately this uh, uh, assim assimilation of the snow product, which is not difficult to do, is uh, was not implemented because the main author here didn't have, have has a lot of skill but not the skill of uh, programming so he took a work around uh, that uh, and, and then I have a comment uh, also on, on this aspect actually in the, uh, so he calibrated manually he comparing the results with the, the modest product the modest product mm -hmm. give you on 250 uh, meters by 250 meters the snow cover which is a product that you have uh, freely from the MODIS satellite and so he calibrated the parameter of this car uh, specially actually for each for each subcatchment in order to have for each, each subcatchment a st uh, in statistics, the, uh, the right reproduction of, uh, of uh, snow falling as was seen by the MODIS. So we have, we have this thing done. Uh, uh, done. And uh, uh, okay, the comment on programming is, uh, you know, if you want to play music, uh, yeah, you can start and knowing nothing, there are a lot of uh, big, Musicians, especially in the jazz area, that I like, that uh, didn't know to uh, read the to read the music or so. But uh, for normal people, uh, learning to read the music or to do uh, to do the, <coughs> the, the, the the to to work on that, to work on the basic of music is important. So in this job, it's important to have some programming skill, which is uh, we we didn't. If you are if you not are not able to program something, yeah, you have you do another job, essentially. But that uh, at the end, uh, even if you you are a driver and not a mechanics, I am consider myself a mechanics of the of the of the cars. I I build cars and sometimes drive the cars. I am not the driver of the cars. Maybe some someone of you can do the driver, but even if you are a driver, if you want to run, to, to run in Formula One, or uh, you have to become a little uh, 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 mechanic, up to a point. Uh, then we calibrate that, that part, and then we calibrate all over all over the thing. Uh, that part of what was called Adige model, which is a, a, a actually a big component that you are, uh, is actually available, but uh, we didn't talk about it. It's doing a lot of things together, but now we split in parts. And we use uh, uh, a look at calibration. Here, actually, uh, uh, we did a little bit of hacking that uh, uh, we didn't uh, uh, we didn't uh, include in the software yet because we, we still have to think a little better about but it was a little bit uh, by hands a little bit by uh, using the system which was we actually did, uh, we say measure data measure data uh, means that we uh, calibrate on this surface we have the rainfall, we have the temperature, we calibrate on these surfaces. But also we uh, uh, kept into account the entire uh, uh, water budget, meaning that uh, we, uh, we took care that in the water budget, the S over the P equals P minus a P minus runoff 
was uh, observed. So uh, what we went to uh, evaporate transpiration and some parameter, we used Prince Taylor, that is an alpha parameter of Prince Taylor, and we went to calibrate the alpha parameter of Prince Taylor in order to close this budget, at least on average. So we have the further control on what we were doing. And uh, okay, what is the, uh, the alpha parameter in this detail we saw two days ago, uh, what exactly it is. Uh, in literature they say, okay, what is this alpha parameter? They say, on the average, alpha is equal 1.26. But this alpha in literature is referred to potential evapotranspiration. While we here we are calculating an alpha for the real evapotranspiration, the actual evapotranspiration. So uh, our coefficient is quite different from this one. <coughs> And then the other, the other thing was that uh, we were modifying the, the, the stuff here in order to uh, say, okay, our actual evapotranspiration is equal to the potential evapotranspiration, but we saw also yet times a coefficient x, which is called usually a stressor which is related to the water content. And in particular, this pressure here is now uh, doing a very um, disorder, a messy, a messy blackboard, but the stressor is something like S divided by a certain X mass, where S is a storage of anything. So we have both, uh, so our alpha in the, in the in the, in the Prince Taylor formula, here is a completely different alpha from what literature is reporting. So you, you cannot have to be based on literature. On the other side, if, if there is a paper where they analyze the use of Prince Taylor equations, and uh, in, the, in this paper, uh, the value of alpha goes from 0 0.6 to 2.4. In, the, in uses around the world. So it's a one to four times, 0 0.6 to 2.4. So uh, literature is not, uh, is not explicative in this case. So we, uh, in doing this paper, actually we adopted a lot of hacking. We, can, we work it around, we force the, what, uh, what our car is uh, able to do in order to have a more controlled result. The, the, the details you have, you have in the paper actually. And I will share with you the paper. It's an open access journal. And um, so uh, our result is uh, a little different than usual. You, 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 here you can see uh, aggregated at uh, daily scale, okay? Because another thing that we were doing, and that there, is a, there are two things that you have to notice. Uh, you have precipitation over there, and uh, the, the small, the, 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 uh, the first thing that was saying is that we are evaluating precipitation. And uh, the more blue there are the precipitation, snowy precipitation. In different math, you say uh, 10. Okay, now it's October of uh, October uh, uh, 11 is monthly. Is monthly this this thing? And uh, you see that you have quite a, a, you, you you have snow there, and you also notice here that you are you have error bars error bus where we uh, went for, uh, we started from the input, we uh, went to the input, when we calculate the rainfall distribution, we use the leave one out, 
we calculate the uh, uncertainty on the input, and we propagate down the uncertainty in the results. So it happens that we have uh, uh, this equation is controlling the error also, but uh, it happens that each forecasting we do here has also its own error bar. So uh, we have here runoff, you see runoff. Uh, and uh, you have evapotranspiration, and uh, you can observe the, that the evapor evapotranspiration on monthly scale looks like pretty constant. pretty constant, but this, then, then we can discuss this, this thing. <coughs> uh, Extreme the variation on the, on the discharge is, uh, is quite high, and here also we did an estimation of, uh, of the soil moisture water constant, the variation of the soil moisture water constant, meaning that uh, we have, we, we close this equation here. We have to do another hypothesis actually, that we have to investigate and then uh, and, uh, uh, made us to build those uh, error bars. Because of, uh, I say that uh, we went to close this budget. But exactly what we, and we have as measurements is that, uh, that we have this, we have this, we don't have the other two. So we have one equation, but two unknown. So uh, what, we, what we were doing in this paper, actually, and I was a further thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is that uh, uh, we say, OK, assume that delta S is, is equal to 0 after let's say two years. So in two years, uh, we have a monitor of the soil moisture. In two years, uh, our soil moisture is uh, coming back to the level it was two years before. We have a sort of record time on the level of, of the soil moisture. So if we do an hypothesis like this one, which is similar to the one that Budiko this, that Budiko did in, in his in his things, we are able to try to estimate the half a year. But actually, what we uh, we did was uh, okay. We did the hypothesis for two years, then we did it for three years, then we did it for four years, one years. We did several of those simulations, and the error bar does actually uh, depends on, on this. Uh, up, uh, on the hypothesis that uh, we have the, the groundwater returning to the same level uh, after a certain amount of time, we calculate the alpha, so we close the budget. Then we, we, we change our hypothesis and our hypothesis, and uh, we went to estimate the possibility of variation of our budget with lacking information, missing information. So actually the procedure uh, at the end of the written in the paper is quite complex. For uh, a, a superficial reader of the paper, it looks like a paper as the other paper in rate for runoff, but uh, instead we, we have two ingredients that make this paper differing from any other paper. Which is first, we take care where we, we, we could of the inputs and the error of the inputs. Second, we close the budget, the water budget, and we manage the, <coughs> the hypothesis of the budget to, to have the final error, the overall error of this. So we think uh, we, we 
we get more reliable results with this thing. Obviously, we are running the model at now with that time scale. So the budget you see here <coughs> on, the month, um, on the monthly scale, here you can see at the Okay, this is, no, this is monthly, okay? So the other is yearly, must be yearly. Okay, I don't know, must be yearly now, this one. Because actually <laughs> I remember that uh, is the yearly evapotranspiration that uh, tends mm -hmm. to no. be constant? No, in the, in the class, in the, from, uh, from each, uh, which is, uh, which is the start year and uh, the, the end of the year? How many years is it? Is it uh, we had uh, 11, uh, 13 years. But this uh, 94, 95. But I don't know, I don't remember because this is this 5, six, 6, 7. I have to look at the data. But yeah, I'm sure. Uh, because in 1904, it's like 5. Oh. It's 95. Uh, Probably you don't start the year in uh, January. Uh, so if the year doesn't start in January, it's 94 and 95 and 95, 96, etc. I, yeah, I have to check it. Uh, well, we will check later on the... Okay, this is, uh, uh, this is monthly. You see, monthly, you, you don't, you don't <laughs> have that regularity that appear uh, yearly because you have a lot of variation. But overall, uh, the, the, the engine of the evapotranspiration during the year is the sun. So because the sun goes up and down the same way all the years, that's the main reason that uh, at the end, evapotranspiration tends to be similar. And uh, here instead, you have a, a great variability. You see, both in, in the evapotranspiration, also in the evapotranspiration, we have here uh, this 11, 12, uh, 2012, which is uh, much, much higher than the other. But the procedure was the one that you saw before. So you can aggregate at all the time scales that you want, and having a, a particular information. A sort of. Uh, the monthly budget, uh, especially, uh, in a sense, I am quite proud of it, <laughs> and I think it's a, a, a good. Uh, you have J, which is precipitation, Q is runoff, and T is evapotranspiration, S is uh, the, 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 the storage, and you have January, April, July, and October, and. Uh, Obviously, uh, we are returning back the results, uh, one results for, for each subcatchment. There is no more than that. And you see that there is, you observe it, all uh, spatial variations <coughs> in rainfall. And uh, uh, you have spatial variation and uh, also uh, you look at and, and see an internal, uh, an internal spatial variability on the, on the quantities. Because the graph that I was showing before, uh, potentially we can show for each of the, for each of, of the subcatchments. So you, you actually come out with a lot of information, really a lot of information. And this, uh, some of these you can uh, compare with uh, remote sensing, for instance. Uh, uh, what is art you can compare co with remote sensing? But maybe <coughs> this. Uh, uh, this one, about transpiration, you can certainly compare with, eva uh, with uh, remote sensing. This chart. Is to, uh, this catchment is too small to be able to measure uh, this charge with, with a satellite, I guess, maybe in the future. Uh, precipitation, you can also, but precipitation, you, you, we have so dense network and we 
potentially we have also the radar there that we have other sources of, of comparison if you want. Uh, but on the vapor transpiration, uh, you call here on soil moisture, you can argue, argue something, uh, but uh, uh, it depends actually on how many reservoirs you have. Because uh, probably for comparing with a, a, a remote sensor, a remote sensor is a, a soil moisture, if you have to have a, a root zone, a root zone, um, um, Reservoir that keep, keeps into account of the first centimeter of uh, you know, of, uh, <coughs> of, of, of terrain of the, of that, and uh, and this is not actually not the case. Those are uh, anomalies, or no, they are absolute. Okay, so just okay, but this is this is a variation, so it can be a variation in negative and in positive. This is a the S over the T actually is not the S. These are uh, 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 essentially uh, this minus this minus this is equal okay. to this. <coughs> is the uh, graphical representation of this equation. Uh, then we uh, obviously if you all do all this stuff that you see before, but you, you, if you are not able to <coughs> reproduce the, uh, the events, you are a bad engineer. <laughs> but actually, what we, uh, we, we saw that we, we had quite a robust result. And uh, uh, obviously, the model is able to give you uh, the discharge and the closure of any other structure in which we divided our catchment. Uh, this is, can be considered normal now, but uh, if you look at other type of model like the IUH models, they give you just the result at the outlet. So in a sense, it, it's like having a lot of IUH modeling. Uh, you can uh, investigate in any point of the basin which is your discharge, which is another practical point. Here we have three uh, gauge stations. Uh, okay, the, the, the blocks are not, sh should be more big to go to here, but uh, we, we, we could do also cross validation, meaning, meaning we calibrate the the model on the measure of, of the outlet, and then we saw how we were going to reproduce the discharges in, in the other two points. They are not very far apart, but uh, reproduction was recently good. To our surprise, I would say, because literature tends to support the idea that you cannot calibrate the model at the outlet and obtain a reliable results in, inside. So that's, uh, that's the first case. 